let's discuss infective endocarditis it is shortly known as ie what do you mean by infective endocarditis sir as the name say that itis means inflammation endocardium right endocarditis means endocardium inflammation of the endocardium which is the inner layer of the heart the heart consists of three layers outer layer is pericardium middle layer is myocardium and the inner layer is endocardium if the inflammation of that inner layer of the heart endocardium occurs then we call it as endocarditis the endocarditis may be due to infectious cause where microorganisms are responsible for the endocarditis or it may be due to non infectious cause if the endocarditis is due to infectious cause we call it as infective endocarditis that means infective endocarditis is nothing but inflammation of endocardium that is the inner layer of the heart due to microorganisms that is the infectious cause that is what we call it as infective endocarditis once we have understood this now how these microorganisms will enter into our body will enter into our blood and they reach the heart and how they will stay or stick to the heart so that they can multiply and cause inflammation that is endocarditis so first thing what we need to know is sir how they enter that is entry of microorganisms in our body the microorganisms will enter into our body may be due to some trauma right or injury the microorganisms which are present in the environment they enter into our body and they enter the blood or due to any surgical procedure which is followed without following aseptic precautions without following aseptic precautions then the microorganisms can enter into our body and they can reach the blood so if the microorganisms they reach the blood they keep on circulating in our body they can't stick to our heart to cause infective endocarditis but if it's very important if the individual is suffering from any predisposing heart condition if the individual is suffering from any predisposing heart condition for example so for example any valvular disorders any congenital valvular disorders so in this case here in this individual the valves are damaged if the valves are damaged so the damaged valves can act as a foci of thrombus formation right a foci of thrombus formation so thrombus is formed thrombi are formed here in those individuals whose valves are damaged due to congenital valvular disorders so this thrombus can act as a foci of uh, st uh, sticking the microorganisms so microorganisms they colonize here microorganisms colonize so microorganisms colonize here to this thrombus that's how they stick to the heart now they multiply and they initiate inflammation to cause endocarditis it after colonization it causes inflammation right due to this inflammation the cells are damaged and these cells damaged cells they collect as cell debris and this cell debris along with the microorganisms they form a mass like structure on the valves and that is what we call it as vegetations and vegetations are the characteristic of infective endocarditis right what do you mean by vegetations vegetations are nothing but a mass like structure consisting of the microorganisms and the cell debris which you see on the valves so that is what is vegetation so this is how the microorganisms they enter into our body and they stick to the heart in those individuals who are having predisposing heart conditions and then they multiply then they initiate inflammation to cause endocarditis once we have understood this the next question is which are the microorganisms which are responsible for infective endocarditis that is what i am talking about etiological agents the organisms causing infective endocarditis they are classified into two types typical infective endocarditis organisms and atypical infective endocarditis organisms typical means these are the most common organism causing infective endocarditis other than that all other organisms they grouped under atypical infective endocarditis organisms so the organisms which comes under typical are staph aureus that is staphylococcus aureus this is the most common organism causing infective endocarditis which is a typical organism and the second one is staph epidermidis it's staph epidermidis which is a cons cons means co means coagulase 
N means negative, S means staphylococcus. It is a coagulase negative staphylococcus that is cons staph epidermidis. Then we have streptococcus. The streptococcus very dense species and sanguis serotype. This is the one which is responsible for infective endocarditis. Then even enterococcus can cause infective endocarditis and hackic group of organisms. Hackic group of organisms. Hackic group of organisms means H for Haemophilus para influenza, A for Agrigidobacterium, C for Cardiobacterium, E for Ikenilla, and K for Kingilla. So these are the five organisms which are grouped as hackic group of organisms because they cause infective endocarditis. And these are the organisms which comes under typical infective endocarditis organisms. So all the organisms other than this, they are grouped under atypical. There is a big list of atypical infective endocarditis organisms, but the important ones are in the enterobacterials, we have E. coli and Klebsiella, and then in the non fermenters, we have Pseudomonas. Then in the fastidious organisms, there are many fastidious organisms which can cause atypical infective endocarditis. Important ones are Coxiella, then Brucella, then Coxiella, Brucella, then Bartonella. All these can cause infective endocarditis and the fungi like candida can also cause infective endocarditis. Like I said, there is a big list of atypical organisms, but these are the important ones. So all the important and most common organisms causing infective endocarditis we have placed here.